Today on Speaking of Spirits, some of history's darkest times as we talk about the witch trials. Join us today. Thank you for joining us. We're glad you're here today. Um, speaking of spirits today, we're going to be talking about the witch trials uh, that happen throughout history. Uh, also, now here in the United States, we tend to hear about the ones in Salem, Massachusetts, but Europe also had their share of witch trials and everything that went down with that. In fact, in Europe between, oh, let me grab my glasses here so I can read so my notes. Uh, between 1560 and 1630, they estimate somewhere between 40,000 and 100,000 people were executed during witch trials. Yeah. So. It's crazy. Um, so, it's unclear when witches first came on the scene, right? But the earliest recording that uh, so far history has found is that to be written in 931 BC and between 931 BC and 721 BC and it tells the story of when King Saul sought the witch of Endor to summon the dead prophet Samuel's spirit to help him defeat the Philistine army and so that's the earliest rec I guess historical piece that they can find of a witch so um, at least recorded. Recorded, right? I think, yeah, recorded. I think any, anybody who has ever had abilities to communicate with the spirit world right. yeah. has probably been labeled a witch. So yeah, probably as far back as humanoids well, I was existed. reading a list and in the Dark Ages, however you want to label that, right. Middle Ages, um, there was a list of things that uh, you could accuse a person of being a witch. Oh. And one of them was uh, if if you were married and your wife back talked, pretty much is what it was. It, uh, it, the, yeah. the list was crazy. Yeah. So I guess the historia really took hold in Europe in the 1400s, mm -hmm. right? That's when it really got a foothold. And um, people started being uh, arrested and labeled as a witch and pretty much tortured until they confessed. You're going to say anything when you're being tortured. And I'm not talking about waterboarding here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about medieval torture chambers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of these were not no. not nice at all. No. And a lot of times people would confess just to stop the torture. Right. You know, and and it, it also got it came down to almost to a point to where if I don't like you, I can accuse you of exactly just about anything. There's one mm -hmm. account of... A, they used a boy who was looking for this invisible mark on women's heads as foreheads as they walked into a church and if he if he pointed then they were drug off until he pointed to the pastor's wife and then and then it stopped <laughs> and then, okay and then they said no 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 not her not her not her so uh within within a century witch hunts were common after um you know, the, in the mid-1400s. Most of the accused were executed by burning at the stake or hanging. Uh, single women, widows, and other women on the margin society uh, were specially targeted hmm. during that period. One of the, uh, some of the research I found is that interesting, is the ones here in Salem in the United States, um, and this was, 
well, it was still kind of nuts, but thankfully for just a little over a year, uh, February of 1692 to May of, of 1693, uh, most of the ones that were accused and found guilty were hanged. Very mm. few of them were actually burned at the stake mm. here in the United States. But uh, I guess the, the burning at the stake was a European thing. The European witch, witch trials did a lot of the burning at Yes, the they did. I, um, when we talk about the Salem witch trials, I guess it began when uh, nine-year-old Elizabeth Paris, 11-year-old Abigail Williams, began suffering fits and body contortions and uncontrolled screaming. They believe today that they, they were, were poisoned. Girls? Oh, I know, right? Yeah, listening to rock. No. Um, they were poisoned by a fungus that caused the spasms and delusions. As more young women began to exhibit the sim- symptoms, mass hysteria ensued, and three women were accused of witchcraft. Sarah Good, Sarah Osborne, and Tituba, who was an enslaved woman owned by Paris's father. So Tituba confessed to being a witch, and then she began accusing others of using black magic. So, on June 10th, Bridget Bishop became the first accused witch to be put to death in the Salem Witch Trials when she was hanged at the Salem Gallows. Ultimately, around 150 were accused and 18 were put to death during the Salem Witch Trials. Women weren't the only victims here. There were six men. There were a few men. That were convicted and executed. They were also convicted and executed. Right. Um, But it was mostly women. There were a few men. But mostly women. In the There's United States, in Europe, bias. there was a great deal many more men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I read that uh, it was only about 20% men in Europe, but that was, I still think, better than here. Yeah. Yeah. That's still a higher percentage than... Yeah. Than Salem. The, the crazy part about the, the Salem witch trials, uh, to me, is... It was like people just needed to find an excuse for their pain. So Mm -hmm. girls were doing bad, couldn't do anything about it, didn't know what it was. You had to have an excuse. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And it's amazing how that evolved into all of it. It it kind of took over. And, And you're right, a lot of people just needed something or someone to blame for the natural woes of life. The, well, remember, yeah. back in these time frames, in, in America anyway, right? So mm-hmm. Puritan, I yeah. mean, yeah. these people were uh, as hardcore religious people as you could probably find. It, it, it was a combination of, yeah, people and, having normal woes combined with um, religious zealotry. Right, and and women were absolutely subservient, and you had to tow, you had to st- you could not put one foot out of line. Mm-hmm. You you could not, and so as a woman and as a as a girl, young girl. So any any girl who, uh, yeah, she stepped out of line. She was there was gonna be there had to be a problem, mm-hmm. because it couldn't just be that she just didn't want to obey. How dare she? You know. Uh-huh. So yeah, any woman that showed any type of power or oh, I would ability have been or right strength or anything, yeah, would have. Yeah, would have been it. Yeah, they were automatically accused. Of, they had great oatmeal though. <laughs> they did. Yes. Quakers. Okay. <laughs> so Massachusetts was wasn't the first of the thirteen colonies to obsess about witches. In Windsor, Connecticut, in 1647, Elise Young was the first person in America executed for witchcraft. Before Cincinnati's final witch tra- trial took place in 1697, 46 people were accused of witchcraft, 11 were put to death. In Virginia, people were less frantic about being witches. And, um, well, that's good. They made it a yeah. law in 1655, making it a crime to falsely accuse somebody of witchcraft. Still in Virginia, people uh, were accused, um, however, none were executed. So, very merciful. Yeah, you know, Virginia was well, more progressive. So what can I say? So, so, but then again, I mean, if you were accused of at that time, you know, if you were accused of witchcraft, you know, what did that do? I mean, at that point, you were probably not really in the community anymore. Right. 
And it really wasn't until in America, 1730, when Benjamin Franklin wrote an article about a witch trial in New Jersey, when he brought to light some of the ridiculousness that was going on and um, in some of these accusations. And it wasn't long, I guess, before the, the mania started kind of dying down. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, they said that witches were hexing their cotton if they had a bad cotton crop or killing their pigs if the pigs probably had an illness and died mm -hmm. because they had overcrowded conditions and just a whole slew of things. Everything boiled down to witchcraft. So, <laughs> Well, again, they wanted something or someone to blame for yeah. life happening. But let's go back to some of the lesser known witch trials because these were pretty interesting. Cool. So um, in France and Switzerland, have you, Belays? I think that's I have no idea. I'm not even Yeah, you know, I, okay, I never took a language in school. Sorry about that, guys. So, often considered to be the first in Europe, the Valais trials began in the French-speaking southern region of Valais oh, and spread to the German-speaking Wallace. The trials claimed at least 367 victims. The actual toll may be higher, with just as many men as women killed. It all began in August 1428 when delegates from seven different districts demanded investigations into all of the, you know, the accused uh, witchcraft, witches and sorcerers. They use sorcerers. They established a rule that if any single person was accused of witchcraft three times, they were to be arrested. Oh, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> but at least you had to be accused three times. Three yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, once arrested, there was no way to escape. Those that confessed were burned at the stake, and those who didn't were tortured until they did confess. Very so, lenient. Very yes. lenient. No way out, basically. <laughs> so oh. you better not make an enemy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that, that's what a choice to make, huh? I know, right? Lie and be burned or don't uh, lie and be tortured. I know. <laughs> Well, that's a lot of these, even the tests that they had to determine if somebody was a witch was, there was no way out of these. No. Yeah. If you floated when yeah. they threw you in water, you were a witch. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. So but drowned. if you sunk, then you're not a witch, but we may or may not pull you out in time. Yeah. And the whole thing was so ridiculous. So Trier, Germany, 1581 to 1593, was one of the largest witch trials in mm -hmm. European history. It started in the rural diocese of Trier in 1581 eventually re reaching the city six years later and um they didn't just so they were they were basically purging what they said were nonconformists, which were protestants jews and witches anybody we don't agree with anybody we don't agree with yep and so um of the 368 accused from 22 villages they were um 368 of the accused from 22 villages were burned alive, almost all confessing under torture. So uh, a third of the victims were no, uh, nobility or held positions in the government and local administration, including judges, burgermeisters, counselors, canons, and <laughs> parish priests. Now, there's an interesting concept. Yeah, yeah take, take okay, your burgermeister. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, you're a witch guy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, think about it. I mean, they were probably uh, nonconformists. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, uh, now, not getting political. I'm not. <laughs> Consider so, yourself conformed. Yeah. Consider yourself conformed. <laughs> Scotland wasn't immune to it, 1590 to 1592. Um, this was kind of interesting. So when King James, King James the sixth, was sailing to Copenhagen to marry uh, Princess Anne of Denmark, there was this really bad coastal storm, and it forced him to land in Norway. So they blamed the storm on a witch. He was so <laughs> obsessed, he penned a book about it and endorsing witch hunting. The, and uh, the first, I guess, witch to fall prey to this was a gal named Jilly Duncan. Uh, she was accused of healing cures. <laughs> oh, how darn you. Yes. How dare she heal people? Don't uh, ever heal people. Yeah, don't ever heal. So they said that she, she then, uh, go, of course, after she was tortured forever and ever and ever, mm -hmm. she confessed to being a witch, and she said she had a contract with the devil. 
Okay. <laughs> she was burned at the stake for her crime. 70 people were accused of witchcraft during this event, uh, including several members of Scottish nobility. Although the number of those killed remains unknown, it, it really, it had such a profound effect, it's believed uh, that Shakespeare adapted these trials into Macbeth. Mm. Hmm. It surprises me then that they would get the nobility, hmm. that they would bring the nobility up on trial for some of these things. That is one well, aspect that really... Catholics versus Protestants. Yeah, okay. And that, and yeah, I that think could that be could too. be it. Is you were not towing the line with where, you know, with whoever was the when Catholicism became the accepted religion over there, the Protestants they were murdered. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I so, mean, yeah, I guess yeah, if they were Protestants and they were they were heretics at that yeah. point, and and the church was going to do away with them. Yep, that's so. one of my favorite internet searches. Uh, was the uh i had the name right when i started opening my mouth here we go lambert's church in munster and they're above the clock they have three cages there and that that's what it was for it was during the the protestant catholic thingy majiggy mm -hmm. and um they'd originally hung three of the uh, leaders of the Protestant church there. Mm. And then it continued on. They started throwing people up there that were witches. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, uh, whenever it went out of fashion, <laughs> it's when people weren't up there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now that's interesting because in, in something like accusing somebody of witchcraft, which they usually connected to working with the devil, Mm -hmm. would be one area where you could get the Catholics and the Protestants to agree. in agreement, right. working with each other to mm -hmm. to go against somebody. It turns out whatever fits your agenda yeah. at the time is Pretty what you much. can use. That's true, yes. Pretty much, because all, all it took for, the, for King Henry was just a nod to say, she caused this storm and it just blew into this huge thing in Scotland. I mean, so, or in Denmark. So... Mm -hmm. The whole, all it, took, all it took was the king to say something. Mm -hmm. In many instances, I think it took a leader to say this is happening, and then mass hysteria ensued. Yep. A couple cases, those leaders started their own religions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, well, that also kind of might indicate how much power the religious leaders had at the time. You know, that you could say something and it would really go kind of viral and people would kind of overreact to it. Mm -hmm. It also kind of, you know, brings out the point of leadership. Be careful what you say, you know. You might want to choose your words carefully sometimes. Or don't be hypocritical. Yeah. Well, speak the truth. Yeah, right? Whatever. I mean, there's, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, come on. <laughs> so, I think what I find amazing to me is that Modern witches distance themselves as far as you can from anything remotely associated with evil and demons. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't believe in the devil in heaven. I mean, that's because that's a Christian concept. It's a Christian concept, but it also kind of depends on what type of witchcraft you're talking about. Well, that's true. Right. <laughs> there that's are many true. different. So I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking Wiccan, um, but there are there's yeah different forms of witchcraft. But most witches that I know are healers yes. of either the physical body or the, the psyche or both. They're more into that type of healing. And I think that I mean, herbalists, I mean, people still use them, right? We have mm -hmm. compounding places that we can go to here in Pocatello that will compound herbal th remedies for you. And they do work because they've been working for centuries. So you have people that develop these skills all the way back mm -hmm. to 900 BC or earlier, and they they were frowned upon. How mm -hmm. dare you heal the neighbor? Kind of concept. I thought that's kind of remarkable. Well, we kind of got that going on right now. Oh yeah, because we're owned lock, yeah. stock, and barrel by pharmaceutical companies. So you know, so yeah, the the medical community that actually heals people, right, 
is often looked down upon. You, you know, mean even the herbal, in this today. Well, whether it be an herbalist, whether it be a uh, naturopathic doctor, yes. whether it be somebody like that, um, if they actually heal somebody, right, well, then look they're at, looked down upon. Look but, how traditional doctors treat chiropractors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's still going on. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you cure the problem, heal it, you won't get paid next month. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. was also. It's interesting, though, then, that throughout history, witchcraft and the ability to heal has always been very tightly connected. Yeah. Uh, whether for good or whether for bad. Um, in a lot of cultures, the medicine man, the local doctor, you know, for lack of a better term, was somebody who knew how to heal. Who mm -hmm. knew what the local plants could do. Who right. did study the herbs and the plants and... Right. And how to heal people. But yeah. But they also worked on, you know, but they they looked at the entire person. They healed them physically and spiritually. Right. Well, yeah, you can heal the body, but if your spirit is not healed. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, a, it's yeah, absolutely. So in a lot of ways, they understood the human, the total human, much better than a lot of our medical world does today. So one of the largest witch, uh, witch trials in Swedish history and one of the largest mass killings of witches in recorded history saw 71 accused witches, including 65 females, or roughly one-fifth of all of the women in the region, were oh, beheaded wow. and burned in a single day. Wow. That wow. seems a little excessive. That's pretty excessive. Yep. The bloodshed began when Minister Laurentius... Ah, got me. Okay, again with the names, all right? Preacher dude. Yes, the preacher was instructed to investigate witchcraft within his parish. He ordered two young boys to stand at the doors and identify the witches by the invisible devil's mark on their forehead as they walked into the church. Much to the dismay of the preacher, one of the boys identified the minister's wife. A situation that was quickly hushed up. <laughs> so, yeah, so again, so now... The, these two boys, young boys, were seen in visible marks. So basically, it was whoever they didn't like. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. So many people put to death. And how old were the boys, does it say? No. Okay. They didn't. No. That's that's crazy to me. Like, yeah, that's absolute craziness. Yeah. Again, I have more questions than answers on that one. Yeah, one of the last witch trials in England was that of Jane White Winham in Hertfordshire in 1712. Following a quarrel, a local farmer accused Winham of witchcraft, claiming she had caused his cattle to sicken and die. Uh, she was init initially denied being a witch, but a potion was found in her rooms. And she stumbled while reciting the Lord's Prayer, which people suggested was evidence of witchcraft. But when it wouldn't be the people trial, staring at her while she's doing it. I know! <laughs> became, uh, kind of became a celebration in English society. And even the judge took a lenient view. When the prosecutor suggested that the witnesses had seen her flying, the judge remarked that flying was not illegal. <laughs> the trial found Wyndham guilty, but the judge set aside her conviction and suspended the death penalty. She died a free woman in 1730. Wow. But still today, women are being accused of witchcraft and killed. So there's um, Ghana's East Ganja district. La uh, just uh, within in the last couple of years... There was a lady, a 90-year-old woman accused of being a witch, and they killed her. So, and that's happening pretty much in Ghana regularly. I, Whoa. So, and, and mostly older women, old women. So, I, I don't get that. Yeah. That, that whole genocide thing mm -hmm. really got in the way of everything there. Well, the older <clears throat> women probably um, either remember or know or have learned some of the healing arts. Sure. And you how know, they know what and that blows heals. my mind that how is healing evil? I don't, you know, would you rather have people be sick and afflicted or healthy and productive? I think sometimes it goes back to the one of the definitions of the word occult is hidden, it means something uh -huh. is hidden. Okay. So if you have information 
that is not open to everybody, then you have hidden knowledge. Oh, and hidden is scary. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And so you have occult information. Okay. So if you know what herbs will heal somebody, and it's not common knowledge to everybody in the village, mm-hmm. then you have some type of secret you know, you get your information from somewhere yeah. Yeah. that we don't. You have the upper hand, not me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so one of the words are called, it just means hidden. So anytime anybody has ever had a knowledge base that was not commonly known throughout the village, then it was considered a, an occult Right. Because you got your information somewhere that we did. You got information mm-hmm. that we don't have. From the shiny red guy. Yeah. <laughs> so you <laughs> must have got your information from, you know. Yeah, it's, it's I'm, I mean, I'm glad that portion of history is over and that, and in some cultures, witches are actually celebrated and they're accepted and, and um, you know. Well, it's even... Uh, I don't know if celebrate is the right word, but everybody knows the word voodoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is an association with everything we've talking about with the, with the folks down there Mm -hmm. don't know the right names, not even going to try, but it's almost celebrated in New Orleans now. Sure, that's what. It, but that's what I mean. Uh, in Scotland now, there's there's different festivals where the witches are. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's part of their culture now that those that are celebrate that those are practicing witches are coming out and they're in the public and the, it's a celebration of their customs. I was just showing them pictures of the hanging cages above the the tower. Hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. So in San Francisco, decades and decades ago, I won't date how old I am. So there is a museum of torture there, and they have a lot of these. Uh, that doesn't surprise me for San know, Francisco, right? It was like <laughs> next to the wax museum and all of those places, you know. So y'all went into the museum of torture, but they had a lot of things there that were um, they've collected through the world, and they've put on display there of different torture devices. That's mm-hmm. a really gruesome and very cool place. But, I believe it. Yeah. So how's it feel in there? Uh, really weird. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, there's places, you know, it's on display, and some of it, they have the history behind each device. And as you're reading it, and, and even as you walk by some of it, the, the feelings and sensations are not good. I absolutely believe it. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I would have nothing to believe that they fabricated this stuff. It looked well worn, <laughs> well used, <laughs> well used. And well, a lot of them probably actual, you know, castles and whatnot. Yeah, that they came they out got of. throughout history. Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, and they said in the in the different plaques, it, it gave the origin, you know, where they had discovered this stuff or where they purchased it from, and yeah, it was spooky. It's it's amazing how good we are at hurting each other. Isn't it? I, Especially if we do it for the greater good. Right. Oh, yes. You know, if we if we know we're on the right side. Then That's right. Throughout yes. history, the worst things humans have ever done to other humans is based off of the greater good. Yeah. Right. So a friend of mine in Texas, hey, Jerry, she just found out that she's related to uh, one of the, the, the two Sarahs in the Salem witch trial. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, through her genealogical studies. So she's pretty excited to be related to a witch. So, cool. Yeah, yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So. It, it's amazing if you can dig into your past a little bit, just how short uh, us apples are away from the tree. Yeah, it's, right? It's something. I was looking at a program, and... Uh, it basically said, are you related to someone famous? Mm-hmm. Like, well, hell, that's a button I have to push. <laughs> 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 I pushed the button, and it showed my family tree, and I can't remember how 
this is possible, and I'm sure that someone could tell me that I'm wrong and I would believe them, but the thing said that I was cousins with Benjamin Franklin. Oh, wow. And I was like, well, hell. Excellent. That's very cool. That explains a lot. Yes, yeah. <laughs> That is cool. But, yeah, it's amazing what's in our history. Yes. I'm sure in my, his my history there was just a bunch of whiskey drinkers and card sharks and i'm sure that uh, <laughs> the rest of my tree is those <laughs> and then mr ben <laughs> <laughs> that's very cool well mr ben knew how to live life too so that's he's true <laughs> he's not that far away from him <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you for joining us today on speaking of spirits the witch trials europe the united states africa one of the darkest uh times throughout all of human history we're glad they're over mostly looks like we still got some places still doing this hopefully that will end soon but anyway thanks for joining us today we look forward to uh, having you back on our next podcast of speaking of spirits